Welcome to my video. I'm Smash Cat, and this is the first video in a small series that I'll be making. Today I'm going to be showing you how to build your masteries optimally for the mid AP carry position. Uh, these are just my opinions. This is just what I've been testing for the last few days, and I feel like these are the best ways to spend your points. Alright, so let me get started here. Double edged sword. Melee. Deal an additional 2% damage and receive an additional 1% damage. So as you can see, this is going to net you a total damage output. Definitely want to pick this up on any melee. Ranged. Deal an additional 1.5% damage and receive an additional 1.5% damage. You can see how this could be problematic for some champions. Some people might be shying away from this talent, but I like to play aggressively and I like to get the kill. So odds are I'm doing more damage than you. If I'm going against you, I'm going to be in your face doing damage. So this is going to net me more damage than it's going to cost me. I like to pick this talent up on any champion that I play. So let's go over here to Fury. There's four points available here. Each point gets you 1.25% attack speed. While this is a great talent, we're going to skip it on most AP carries because the majority of them don't utilize attack speed like an AD carry or you know, like a jungler would. What we want is sorcery. This is cooldown reduction. It's the same exact scale, 1.25% per point. We would like the, the whole 5%, but there's definitely better ways to spend your talents. So we're just going to put two points in that for now. And then we put our final point in the first tier over here in Butcher. Basic attacks and single target spells deal an additional 2 damage to minions and monsters. This doesn't trigger on area of effect damage, like it says, so poisons, any kind of AoE like swipe. I'm going to use Nidalee as an example a lot, just because she's my main. So say for example, Nidalee's Q will do an additional 2 damage. Nidalee's E will do no additional damage, so that's in cat form by the way. Keep that in mind. This also is going to help you last hitting. It doesn't seem like it's going to be that much, but that 2 damage is definitely going to help out. So we definitely take this point. A lot of AP carries have a hard time last hitting. And then you come down here to Feast. And this is a uh, chain. You can see this piece right here. That means that you need this talent to get to this talent. A lot of you probably know that, but just in case, figure out throw it in there. Feast, killing a unit restores 2 health and 1 mana. A lot of people are going to overlook this talent. They're going to say, you know, 2 health and 1 mana, that's not going to, you know, that's not going to save my life. That's not going to make a difference in the long run. But, say you kill 10 creeps per minute. That's about average, I'd say. That's going to be 20 health and 10 mana. So over the course of the 60 seconds, you're gaining 1.6 health per 5 and 0.83 mana per 5 if you can maintain 10 creeps per minute, which I'm pretty sure any of you can do that. And if you have trouble doing that, let me know and I can take you in a custom game and show you some tips on last hitting. You can just add me in game, let me know that you wanted some help, and I'll take you in for you know like a 10 or 15 minute custom game, show you a few tips. And then we come over here to Mental Force. You can put three points into this, and it equates to 16 ability power, 0.89 per level. This is definitely the direction you want to go in the second tier talents for an AP carry. It's definitely the best use of your points in the second tier. Your other options are brute force. You don't really need the attack damage unless you're playing a champion like um, Kale. She could utilize it. Uh, Kali, maybe Katarina, people like that. Hybrids can utilize Brute Force and Martial Mastery, but we're going to avoid those on a traditional AP carry, which is what this is. This is a defensive AP carry tree. So we come up here to expose weakness. Damaging an enemy with the spell increases allied champion's damage to that enemy by 1% for the next 3 seconds. I think that this is skippable. I'm not really interested in the 1% damage. It's really hard to hit a spell sometimes, and usually, like for me, on Nidalee, by the time I hit a spear, if I'm chasing you for first blood, you're probably already going to die. So that 1% damage is only going to be maybe 2 total damage, 3 damage at the most, if the jungler is helping me. This isn't going to be a huge deal. Not going to break the game, not going to make a difference. So we can skip this talent, and then come down to tier 3. You see spell weaving and that goes into blade weaving so this looks like they have really good synergy you know three percent damage here three percent damage here but in reality it's three percent total damage between the two points so 1.5 percent damage per point if they're both stacked and you have to ramp them up you need to get three auto attacks and three spells in order to achieve that three percent damage so this is a contingent three percent damage boost which i did a lot of testing and 
it's really not that impressive. I tried it on Ezreal, any on hit modifier like his Q doesn't stack blade weaving, it stacks spell weaving. So unless you're going a really heavy hybrid where you're getting a lot of ability power, you're not going to utilize that. So this really isn't good on a lot of champions. Kale is the exception. Um, Akali, like I said, the champions that are going to utilize brute force and expose weakness can also utilize spell weaving and blade weaving like Jax. A lot of those really hybrid champions. Um, but for the most part, traditional mids are going to avoid that. So we can come over here. Like I said, we're skipping Martial Mastery because we're also skipping Brute Force. We want to avoid that on traditional AP carry. And we're going to take Arcane Mastery. That's the chain talent from Mental Force. It's a free 8 ability power at level 1. That's almost 2 quints. A really valuable talent. And it's your best value per point for ability power out of the whole tree. And then we're going to take Executioner. A lot of people see this talent. They say 5% damage below 50%. You know, that's not really that big of a deal. But this, I think, is the most... OP talent out of all the masteries. 5% damage below 50% health. And I did a lot of testing with this. And I used to put two points in it, you know, 35% avoid dangerous game. And I take those two points and put them over here somewhere. Something like that. Or put them in the cooldown reduction. But just loading this up is the best way to go. It's definitely the best talent you can pick up. This, even though it says increases damage dealt to champions below 50% health, this also affects minions, which may be hot fixed in the future. But for right now, this also affects minions, so it makes last hitting much easier. And then we bump down from that. The chain talent is dangerous game. Another talent, just like Feast, that you might overlook. Say, killing a champion restores 5% missing health and mana. How's that going to help me? And that's what I said. I skipped this talent. But when I went in, I had a lot of questions about Masteries. And I looked online, and I couldn't find any help with it. Nobody went through and did a full analysis of every talent, and I tested everything. Dangerous Game, when I tested it, I was really, really surprised. It's actually a lot better than it looks, and also, it says killing a champion. It procs off of assists as well, so that's something to keep in mind with this. If you're in a fight, and you kill three people, or even if you assist in the death of three people, this is going to proc three times for you. It doesn't have diminishing returns, anything like that. The other thing to keep in mind is it's of your missing health. So if you're at 75% health, it's not going to be a very impressive heal. But it's it has the potential to save your life multiple times in one fight. So that's how good this talent is. It's not quite as good as, you know, Executioner, but um, it's definitely, you want to pick this up. It's worth the point. And then we go over to Archmage. 5% of your total ability power increased. For some champions, this isn't going to be that valuable. Like... If you go a really tanky champion, if you're building like a Mordekaiser and you only have around 400 ability power, this isn't going to be all that impressive. You might be better off, you know, taking some cooldown reduction, taking spell weaving, something like that. Because this talent isn't that impressive for you. So avoiding it isn't going to cost you that much. Um, for a traditional AP carry, however, this is going to net you anywhere from 40 to 60 ability power, depending who you're playing. So you definitely want to spend these three points in here. This is late game, so it takes a little bit longer to ramp up. But it's definitely worth the point, so pick it up. And then we come over to Warlord. We're not going to have any bonus attack damage. If we do, it's going to be minimal. And we're not going to waste the three points here, for obvious reasons. I already talked about Blade Weaving. Not worth the point, unless you're on a hybrid champion. Uh, Frenzy. We're not going to be critting very much. Some people might get a, you know, get a Trinity Force or something like that, but you're not going to ever focus crit. So even if you do get a lucky crit, it's only 5% attack speed for 3 seconds, and it's not that impressive. So come over to Devastating Strikes, and this is one of the best values in the whole offense tree. 6% armor and magic penetration. That's 2% per point, and you definitely want to pick this up. As long as you have 21 points in offense, there's no champion that will avoid this. Um, this helps every person in every situation. So then we come over to Arcane Blade. Basic attacks also deal bonus magic damage equal to 5% of your ability power. This is going to help you last hit, and in the end of the game it's the same scaling as Archmage, so you can think of it as like an extra 50 attack damage potentially if you have 1000 ability power. This is going to be 50 bonus damage on your auto attacks, so this is going to help you um, clear towers, it's going to help you kill champions. That person that almost got away, you're going to get them now, you're going to do an extra 100, 200 damage depending how many auto attacks you get off in a fight. Um, and that's going to make the difference a lot of the time. So definitely pick up Arcane Blade. Helps early game with last hitting. Helps with trading. 
and it's really invaluable to an AP carry, so make sure you take that. And then we'll come down to Havoc. 3% increased damage, pretty straightforward, I don't have to talk too much about this. 3% damage adds up, so definitely don't forget to get this in the offense tree. So now let's come over to the defense tree. And you come up and look at the top and you see block. Reduces incoming damage from champion basic attacks by 2. This skill definitely adds up. Over the course of a fight, you're going to take a lot of basic attacks. And even in just laning, you're going to be trading with a lot of basic attacks. Like I said, I'll use Natalie as an example a lot because she's my main. Using your spear to harass is really hard early game because they're going to be playing safe behind their minions. So a lot of trading that's going to happen is just auto attacking in between last hits. And this is going to be invaluable, saving you hundreds of health over the course of a whole game. Definitely pick this up. And as for your next talent, it's recovery versus enchanted armor. At first I picked enchanted armor, I said 5% bonus armor and magic resist. I can't believe this is only 2 points, I'm getting this before they change it. Upon further investigation, like I said I tested everything, recovery is much better. This 5% armor and magic resistance is only off of your bonus, so any base armor and magic resist does not count. This only comes from items, runes, masteries, that kind of stuff. So. If you think about it, on an AP carry, the, the tankiest you're going to be, you're probably going to pick up a Zonias. That's usually pretty standard. Maybe an Abyssal Scepter, and even if you pick up those two items, this is only 2.5 armor and 2.5 magic resist. Even with your runes and masteries, that's pretty negligible, especially since you're not going to have those items until 20 minutes probably, or later. Unless you rush an Abyssal Scepter, and if you do that, you're probably in trouble. Definitely avoid Enchanted Armor. I thought it was God Mode talent, but it's actually a trap, so avoid that. Pick up recovery, because the 2 health per 5 is going to net you a lot more health than this 2.5 armor is going to save you in the long run. So let's come over here and look at unyielding now. Melee reduces all incoming damage by 2, and ranged reduces all incoming damage from champions by 1. So clearly melee has an advantage in the new masteries, as you can tell from double-edged sword. Come over here, you get unyielding, there's a few others like over here in bandit. Um, Melee is the new focus, but that's not to say that range is weak. That's because range was too strong last season. So this is giving melee a chance to catch up. And this bonus 2 damage, or 1 damage if you're ranged, is going to make a huge difference. Every spell, every auto attack, everything gets reduced by 2 or 1, depending. And that's going to add up, like I said before, in block to hundreds of health. And it's definitely an easy pickup. We go over to Veteran Scars. Um, this is now a 3 point talent, up from a 1 point talent but it's definitely worth all 3 points, as you get 36 health, so that's 12 health per point. And it also unlocks the availability of Juggernaut, which is 3% of your maximum health. And I know a lot of my things, like I said, are front-loaded. Um, they give me the best chance to get a kill. They don't really worry about getting away afterwards, or how well you're going to survive afterwards, as long as you get the kill. Because if you go too late, like if you build late game and then you get shut down early game, you're going to be a lot weaker than the other person. They're going to have a much more gold than you. And they're going to be snowballing while you're backpedaling. And you're not going to be able to pull out late game because they're going to be so strong that they're just going to keep crushing you. And you're never going to become relevant. So I like to keep it front loaded and then build long term if I need to. This talent, however, is a late game talent. This, in the beginning of the game, only gives you a few health and it scales up. Like, say you have 2,000 health, this is going to give you a bonus of 60 HP, which is the single most valuable health talent out of any point here. So this is definitely going to give you the most health for your points. Um, definitely worth the 1 point pickup. It's better than 2 armor, it's better than 2 magic resist, 3% damage. Like, these are all negligible. Um, this is definitely your best pickup. So that pretty much concludes the tanky AP carry guide here. I'm also going to go into the mana hungry guide for AP just because I've already explained all these offensive masteries and I'll show you here. It's actually the same exact offensive mastery. If I switch back and forth, you can see it. The only points I'm shifting are the nine points out of defense into utility. And you don't want to do this if you're doing it with a new champion or if you're going against somebody you know you're going to have a hard time against. Like if you're playing, for example, like I said, Nidalee and you're going against a Zed, you know you're going to have a hard time. So you're not going to pick your mana regeneration. You're going to pick your health, your damage reduction this kind of stuff because he's just going to all in you at level 6 and crush you with these talents here. So it's just kind of situational, know what you're going against and know how you're going to build, know how you're going to play. 
And if you're going to play more defensive, then take the defensive masteries. But like I said, I like to play more offensive, so utility is usually the way I spend my last 9 points. So I'll show you here how I go about doing that. Phase Walker uh, reduces the casting time of recall by 1 second. While this can save your life sometimes, usually if you just avoid the situations where you go in too deep or something like that, this won't come up. And like I said, this doesn't help you get a kill. Um, this helps you get away after a kill, after a dangerous tower push, something like that. That's when this comes in handy, but usually I'm out of there by then. I try to get something that helps me chase, helps me run away, something like that. And that actually brings me to my next point. Fleet of foot, 0.5% movement speed, which you think 0.5 is not very much, but to somebody that doesn't take that 0.5, you're going to have a little bit extra movement speed and you're going to be able to keep up with them. And they're not going to be able to outrun you. So this is definitely, it's worth the one point. Especially when a lot of the mid champions aren't very fast to begin with. Then our next talent here. We come over to Meditation. 3 mana regeneration per 5 seconds. That's 1 regen per second. This is one of the only talents that actually gives you mana regeneration other than Feast and a few other talents. Um, you've got extra bonus mana here and you know in Alchemist there's a little bit extra. But um, this is the only real mana regeneration talent that you can get. So we definitely want to take all three points for someone like Nidalee, someone that's really thirsty like that. AD carries also need to take this, like Lucian and Jace, anybody like that that really needs the mana. Utility, nine points is the way to go. And then we go over to Scout. The reason why I don't take Scout is because usually it doesn't come up to a situation where I need to ward a little bit farther away. I like to start out with the, the Sight Ward Trinket. Scout doesn't really appeal to me when I'm playing an AP carry. On a support maybe, like you can ward over the wall and drag it into the bush a little bit extra and stuff like that, but this talent for me doesn't really shine. I'd rather have the 0.5% movement speed. So that might be something I look at down the road, but for right now I'm going to skip it. Now we come down from the mana regeneration. Um, the next chain talent is Strength of Spirit. That's one health regeneration per 5 seconds for every 300 maximum mana. And this is going to give you the most health regeneration with scaling. And even at level 1, you're going to have enough mana to give you that one extra health regen. So this is already on par with recovery. One point for one health per five. And say you're playing a champion again like Nidalee. Someone that gets a tier of the goddess, they get mana items. Say you get a sheen. Every 300 mana is one health per five. So this could easily add up to five health regeneration per five seconds for one point. Which makes it one of the most valuable regeneration talents out of all the mastery choices that you have available. So definitely pick this up if you're going to put 3 points into Meditation. And then we go down to Summoner's Insight. And this is one of my favorite skills because it gives you a 10% reduced cooldown on your Flash and Ignite. Which doesn't seem like a lot, but those few seconds that you get on your Ignite could make the difference between tower diving someone and dying when they turn around and kill you. Or igniting them a few seconds before they get to their tower and killing them. This can make a huge difference. Running, you have 5 seconds left on your Flash and you could flash over the wall, but you die instead. This has happened countless times to everyone, and if it hasn't, then you're the luckiest person I know, because a few seconds can make a difference with stuff like this. So definitely pick up Summoner's Insight. Alchemist and Culinary Master, they definitely have their niche, but that's not something that I usually take advantage of on an AP carry, because like I said, I like to go offensive, and the only way to take advantage of Alchemist and Culinary Master is to buy a lot of health potions, you can do like a cloth 5 pot, you can do crystalline flask and health potions, and they both benefit from alchemist, so that's not a bad way to go. But I like to go runic affinity, and that gives you a 20% increase in shrine, relic, quest, and neutral monster buffs by 20%. And that means you're going to have blue buff for 20% longer. I like to steal blue buff a lot, that's kind of what I like to do on Nidalee, and pretty much on any champion that I play, I like to control the enemy's blue. So I always have it warded. Um, I'm always checking as soon as it spawns, I know the timer, I'm going over, I'm getting it. Their blue buff is usually my blue buff, so this is really utilized for me. For some people, I could see why they wouldn't want runic affinity, they don't get blue buff very much, or say you're playing a champion like Katarina, which obviously you're not going to be using the utility masteries, but say you'd like to use a utility, or uh, maybe you're playing with a jungler that's a friend of yours and he likes the blue buffs. So you're going to just let him have him, you're not going to make a fuss about it. So take your point out of Runic Affinity, take your point out of Summoner's Insight, just one point. You go Alchemist, Culinary Master, and this is your alternate setup. This is for the people that like to start Crystalline Flask and a few health potions, 
or if you want to start like a cloth armor and five health potions. I did a lot of testing, like I said, I tested pretty much everything. You can ask my girlfriend, you can ask my friends, we went into custom games for hours just testing everything. So I tested Alchemist and the 10% bonus on the health potion gets you about 20 health. It's a 1.5 second addition to the normal health potion and combined with Culinary Master that's 40 health and 10 mana per health potion. So say you do start with a cloth armor and 5 health potion, you're going to have an extra 200 health and 50 mana for 2 points. And that's pretty significant, just given the value of the points. So if you're going to go that route, definitely make sure you take advantage of Culinary Master and Alchemist. And also, just so you know, this says potions and elixirs, but it also works with Crystalline Flask. Uh, it is a 12 second duration instead of a 15 second duration like the health potions, but it does give you a 1.2 second additional health and mana regeneration, which equals, I think it was 13 health and 7 mana, something like that. Um, it's definitely around there. Somebody can correct me on that if they want to, but it's really not, it's not quite as big as the health potions, but it definitely is something to keep in mind because you can keep using that extra bonus every time you go home. So I'm just going to put these back how I like them. And that's my AP mid guide. You can use this top lane, you can use this bot lane, but this is primarily focused on traditional AP carries for the mid lane. I hope this clarifies things for you guys because I noticed there wasn't a lot of material out there. So I'm going to be making a few more guides like these for AD carry um, that are also going to include bruiser lanes. I'm going to make a tanky lane, junglers, and support mastery setups. I have them all here. But I'm going to split them up into separate guides. That way you guys can have a little more clarity and you can kind of get to where you want. Make sure you check those out. I'll have a lot more in-depth analysis for you. So you can definitely check that out. I hope this guide helped you guys out. And if it did, make sure that you like and subscribe. And don't forget to check me out on my live stream. I've got uh, updates on my Twitter for when I'm going to be streaming next. Stuff like that. So feel free to stop by and check that out. You stay classy, San Diego.